What's up, everybody? Welcome back to my Twisted Life of Poetry. I gotta clean my camera, y'all. It looks exceptionally dirty. It look all gray and fuzzy and everything. It is traveling talk Tuesday. Y'all about to head to work with me. Oh my god, I didn't realize it was this time. I'm late. I got gas though, so that's a good thing. Um, yo, I'm gonna start off with the bad news, y'all. Start off with the bad news. I didn't get the job. And I didn't get the job because the application did not go through. They didn't even get the application. I finally got the um, the the, the uh, general manager to hit me back. And yeah, he was like, I don't even see your application on my um, platform. So, I didn't get the job. <sighs> well, usually when stuff like that happens, I say... It wasn't meant for me. So that's the way I'm going to look at it for today. It wasn't meant for me to have. So I'm going to continue to continuously apply for other jobs and other places. Um, I was talking to my friend about it the other day. This is the first time I had to apply for a job since 1998. Like real talk. Every other job that I've had since 1998, I've transferred. Um... But yeah, I haven't had to apply for a job since 1998. So this is the first time I did a job application online. And I wasn't familiar with the system on how it worked. And remember I told you I was getting in at that crunch time at 11.59, 12.01 happened. And I was like, wait a minute, did my application go through? Nope, it didn't. So I know better next time. Um, now that my application is already on the system, so all I have to do is come back and say, bam, apply for this job. But I got to wait for it to pop back up in that city or something similar. So yeah, that's oh, yeah, that's my my news for the weekend. Keenan and I had a pretty good weekend. Um, let's start off. We went to go see Hamilton. Me and my mother. We went to go see Hamilton. My mother absolutely loved it. Now, if I didn't know that Hamilton was about a real man, the real Alexander Hamilton, I probably could enjoy the show. The acting was phenomenal. The singing was phenomenal. But I felt that they were trying to glamorize a motherfucking scoundrel ass of a man. Alexander Hamilton was a piece of shit as a person. Then I kind of found out that he was half black. His mother was Haitian. They kept on stressing on the fact that he was a, a, a bastard immigrant because his mother was supposed to be a Haitian whore. Um, he... He didn't like black people. He didn't give a fuck about black people. He was one of those black people that was passing for white that wanted to make sure that nobody knew he was really black. So he, uh, you know, went out of his way to do everything despicable towards us as a people. Fuck Alexander Hamilton. So I didn't like that about the play. I didn't like that they fact that they. I didn't like the the fact that they tried to glamorize the fact that he was uh, cheating with his. So his wife's sister the entire time up until he died they glamorized that shit like it was such like a romance story they did it beautifully they did, did it beautifully um, but yeah fuck Alexander Hamilton but the play itself was good I, I probably would not have went to go see it um, if it was not already part of my season pass package same way with the, the movie The Showman uh, The Showman is about P.T. Barnum um, the Barnum and Bailey Circus and I hear the movie is so damn good. The music, the staging, everything. But they glamorized the life of a man who was a sadistic ass, racist bitch. The motherfucker used to skin black people and put them up as part of his fucking show. So fuck P.T. Barnum. And that's why I wouldn't go see The Greatest Showman. That's why I would never go see that movie. Because I was like, they are glamorizing a motherfucker who ain't shit as a person. And I didn't want to see it. Um... But, like I said, my mother absolutely enjoyed it. I think my mocha, she felt the same way as I did coming out of it. Um, I did not know that Hamilton was a rap musical. There was absolutely no verbal dialogue. Everything was either being sung or being rapped. Except for one point there was a poem done. Um, a lot of times doing the rapping, I couldn't understand what the fuck they were saying. They was talking fast in a twister. I know I talk fast and I couldn't understand what the fuck they were saying. So I didn't, um, that bothered me. That's one reason why I couldn't stand that movie, uh, Mamma Mia, because they sung everything. There was no verbal dialogue to balance out the singing. 
Um, so that, yeah, that kind of bothered me. And then it was this one black guy. Uh, the whole cast was minorities. There were they were either black, women, or if they were white, they were a woman or gay. I don't think there was a straight gay man, a straight white man in the whole damn thing. Um, but yeah, the fact like they, Alexander Hamilton was a black man, Thomas Jefferson was a black man, uh, George Washington was a black man. I have to really read up on the play because I didn't want to read anything about it before I uh, went. I have to really read, really read up on it to find out why they wanted to cast all black people in these roles of these sadistic ass fucking vultures, the founding fathers of our country. Fuck them. Um, yeah, I wonder why. I, I really need to know to understand it. If y'all know, if y'all seen Hamilton and y'all understand the, the whole story behind it, why is this a, 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 a the main characters who are playing these racist ass white men? Um, I know that no black people should be able to play anything, but I just didn't understand the, the philosophy behind it. Um, but there was one guy that was playing Thomas Jefferson, and like the audience around me would go crazy when he came on stage. He was not the best actor, but what he was was the over exaggeration of black stereotypes. I mean, he had a cat daddy walk that was so fucking hard, and it was intentional. Every time he came on stage, the white people around us cheered like crazy. It's like it was almost watching a vaudeville act when he came on stage to me. And I, um, I wasn't uncomfortable. I was just like, really, bitch. Yeah. So then over the weekend, me and Kina on Sunday, I told y'all we were going to go see the Walking Dead finale. They had it at AMC movie theaters in your local towns. I told people to go see it. Um, we got free posters. Oh, I think I took the post in the house. They gave us free walking there. They gave us some merch and everything. Um, we got to see, see it without commercials. So we saw the season that the Walking Dead season eight finale and Fear the Walking Dead season four premiere, which actually was pretty good. I stopped watching the show a long time ago. I still try to catch Mike B's reviews on them every once in a while, but I stopped watching the show. By Morgan being on this show, plus the two new characters that they added in, um, the young lady that's playing Althea and the guy that's playing John, it gives it a whole new dynamic for me, and I think I'm going to like it. So I may watch Fear this season. And no, I'm not going to go back and try to catch up, because I didn't, it, it may, it'll discourage me from watching it again. <laughs> I don't even think I need to go back and catch up, because this is supposed to be like a whole new beginning. They have, they skipped the time zone. They now in this this place in, in the Texas, and Morgan has left from our season to their season, and it's the same time zone now. The time zone are now matching up. So yeah, um, or so a year later, I think it's supposed to be a year later. Um, so that might be interesting. I will do my Walking Dead recap and review later on this afternoon. I, I'm gonna try to get Kenny in on it. She had uh, some quizzes and homework to do yesterday. So we didn't get it done on Monday. But we came back from the movie so late on Sunday night that, yeah, I didn't get it done. Um, PNTV, I'm going to talk about uh, Coachella. And I'm going to talk about Kendrick Lamar's award uh, tomorrow. That'd be on Wednesday. So today, I said, let me see what he's talking about me. Because this is what Traveling Talk Tuesday is all about. Um, we finally got our tickets for Cuba. I ended up paying for everybody. Everybody's supposed to pay me back. I was not risking not going, so I said, "Fuck it!" I just bit the grind, and I ended up paying for every all four people's tickets on this cruise, and everybody got paid me back in two weeks. If they don't pay me back, it's gonna be hell to come play the captain. I swear to goodness. But yeah, because that's a lot, of, a lot of damn money to take out two thousand dollars, take out your pocket in one fucking time. It's a lot of goddamn money. But yeah, it's done. So Cuba is in the works. I'm over excited and then talking to the royal caribbean cruise lady on the phone she was telling me about havana and everything i'm just so excited havana, na, na, na. yes i cannot wait and i think i'm gonna have the uh, wi-fi package i'm not sure yet it's like 70 bucks for the whole week oh uh, i don't even know if i'm gonna talk to y'all that much but that is supposed to be doing my my 45 days countdown until my birthday so i don't know maybe we might have internet if all four of us split that 71 dollars that might be it. Um, hey, let me tell y'all what happened yesterday. Check it out, yo. So I'm in Wally World. Yes, I still attend Walmart. Uh, 
Target don't have everything I want all the time, but I prefer Target over Walmart. I went to Wally World though to go get, get some um, dog food and some, the doggy training pads. The doggy training pads that I bought for my dog is uh, sold at Walmart only that I've seen. And yeah, he's been losing his damn mind every time we leave the house now. He's going busting the kitchen to poop on the kitchen floor for some dog reason. I don't think it's because he really got to go, but I, his training pads haven't been down there, so maybe we're going to see how they work today. Um, so I'm at Walmart and I go into the store and I come back out and I walk up to my car and I was like, is that a motherfucking dent in my door? And I'm like about to lose my shit. I was like, I cannot believe some motherfucker done hit my damn car on the Walmart lot. Y'all know I already been tripping off all the hooju hooju that I think has been going on since we left New Orleans. I'm like, and it keeps going on. The t it tire keeps turning. That's where my brain is at. And I'm like looking around like, okay. Is the car next to me? Is this the motherfucker that hit my car? You know, I'm looking around on the lots trying to see if it like fits like a basket. If maybe a, somebody let their basket run into there. And I'm just so fucking upset that my damn car is damaged. For some reason, one of my front panels is popping off the front. And it made me think that somebody hit my fucking car. But then I realized when I went to my garage the other day, I had one of those floor model stereos down in there. And I bumped it to the floor model stereo. And I probably knocked my own panel loose. Which I could put that back together with some crazy glue. But the fact is, like, this motherfucking dent in my door. Now my car is going to be looking all fucked up the hell up to be damned. I've only had my car two years. It's still brand fucking new. It's a 2016. I'm upset that my car is damaged. So I'm going around the lot and I'm looking like, okay, is the security cameras up here? Looking up down. Like, somebody had to see this shit. Did you see my car get hit? Who you see hit my car? That's how I'm feeling right now. And I'm going buck wild in my mind. And I'm pissed. I'm angry. I'm frustrated. So I'm about to head back into Walmart, right? going up there trying to see and I see the security dude coming down so I'm like okay I'm gonna flag him when I get by my car and I try to park my basket somewhere where it wouldn't roll and then I looked up and saw my damn car two spots over y'all that was not even my fucking car I was going ballistic off of somebody hitting my car and it wasn't even my car it meant when I looked at it deeply I thought damn this car is dirty I know I haven't washed my car yet, but I was like, this car looked dirty. I know my car was this dirty. That's what my thought was. My car is a Hyundai Accent. This car wasn't even a Hyundai brand. I don't even know what it was. And why did I think this car was mine? It has a different uh, color of gray. All I could see was this dent in this gray car. And without me looking at it deeply, I'm so surprised that I hadn't tried to stick my fucking keys into the damn door to get in. I did pop my lock, <laughs> and I and, but I've been having trouble with my alarm. I think my battery must be down, so it hasn't been popping automatically all the time. And so it wasn't popping at that time. And I was like, okay, I'm gonna have to open the door with my keys, baby. That wasn't even my car. I was so mad. I was about to go off on everybody and everything around me, and I was wrong. I was wronger than two left shoes on the right foot. I was so wrong. Oh my God. I said, wait till I travel to talk to and I'm going to come up here and tell y'all this damn story. <sighs> Experience. Experience. I think I need new glasses. <laughs> I think I need new glasses, child. Man. Especially one. Why is everybody driving like y'all? Merge. What the fuck? Don't you bring your bitch ass back over here. You just got in that goddamn lane. The fuck is wrong with you? Oh my gosh. I, I don't understand. This highway has been this exact same way for umpteen motherfucking years. Why would people get up here? They don't realize that the left lane go left and the right lane go right. They jump into this damn lane, then they want to merge right, then they realize, oh shit, I'm supposed to be going left. And then they want to hop their bitch ass back over here in the left lane and almost clip my motherfucking car. My panel already coming off because I ain't glued it back down yet. I'm not mad, y'all. I'm just saying. I'm just saying right now. This, this is not anger. This is not road rage happening right now. This is just, I'm just saying, matter of factly saying right now. I need to get to work. I want a massage. I have not got a massage in a few weeks and I want a massage so bad but massaging makes me sleepy and I have a lot of work to do yes the book is still not out but this time it's not on me it, it is on me because it's some stuff I should have did long freaking time ago like I'm trying to get all the promotional items out but it's on pre-sale 
If you want a pre-sale copy for 10 bucks of the book that you can't see yet, send send me an email at mytwistedlife at gmail.com. It's in my description box. It should be in my description box. If it's not, I'll add it. And then I will shoot you a PayPal link so that way you can get a um, a, a copy, a, 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 a pre-sale copy for 10 bucks. All the pre-sales have to go through me because they will not let me put my paper back on pre-sale. And then the book is supposed to be released May 15th. I don't even get back into town until then, so you won't get your books mailed out until I get back in town, which is May 15th. Um, yeah, so Regrets is one of the books that's coming out. This is a, the book that I have um, about the, the the battered wife who is um, in, the, in the fight for her life. That's pretty much what that story is about. And then we have Endgame, which is the second erotic story. Um, it's an erotic cycle thriller that's stalking, killing, murder, and a lot of sex. In Endgame, both of them are coming out one week apart from each other, and they're both on pre-sale right now. And my links to my e-commerce is not functioning properly. That's why I say that. And that's my. It's their fault, but it's my fault because if I did it like ahead of time, then I would have been able to nip that in the bud. I hate that that line is there. I would have been able to nip that in the bud a um, long time ago. And yeah, my I had a friend that was supposed to be doing this book conference with me. I, I, you know what? I'm gonna stop calling motherfuckers friends. Had a person that was supposed to be doing this book conference with me, and last month he said he was gonna get back with me that following Thursday too, so we could pay for our booth and everything. And this is now on the middle of April, and I had to actually send him a, a text message like, "Dude, I haven't heard from you. What's going on? You, if you can't afford to do it right now, let me know." And then he was like, "Oh, I'm gonna go through some stuff. I can't afford. But why the fuck do I gotta keep calling people to 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 ask them about shit that they said that they was gonna do?" Like, that pisses me off. And this is the problem I have with a lot of independent business owners. Y'all don't motherfuckers don't know how to do business. Ugh! Alright. Like I said, I'm I'm in a good mood. (laughs) I'm actually in a good mood. I might have to put my hair down. Put my hair up some. I don't know. I like my big hair don't care right now. We gonna see how I feel. How I feel today throughout the work day. Um... Y'all have a good day. Thank y'all for coming back. Thank y'all for rolling with me on Travel and Talk Tuesday. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Leave your comments down in the comment section because y'all know I like to run my mouth and talk to people. And I will see y'all. Um, if y'all watch The Walking Dead, I will see y'all this afternoon for The Walking Dead recap and review. Otherwise, I will see y'all back here tomorrow for PNTV. Poetry's news and twisted views. I appreciate you. Thank you for all y'all support. Peace.